it's Kelly Scott here with my pet anaconda to show you what we'll be doing this week in the Forever Strong Finisher at Fulton Catabells. Just kidding, this is not an anaconda. It's battling ropes. Uh, we are bringing battling ropes back and I'd like to show you some variations for the very easy beginner progression and then we'll take it three steps forward. So let's get started. So this week, all of our progressions will have the same handhold style on the battling ropes. So you're going to start by keeping relatively soft knees, a nice upright back, and you really want to keep your arms very loose. Um, there's no need to yank and slam as you're going through this movement. You want to learn how to power a wave through the ropes by making a gentle pumping motion through your hips. I'm pushing my feet into the floor. You see my elbows are close tucked into my body, my shoulders are down, and I'm trying to create a loose wave using that sports term follow through, I'm getting the follow through in my body. You can pick up your intensity and your speed once you get the rhythm down. With this variation, you're trying to get a wave pattern that's going to hit all the way at the end of the rope and even start to wave back. So we're going to do three rounds of battling ropes. You can do all three rounds with your standard variation and that's fine. If you'd like to progress it to a single foot stance on round two and three, I'll show you how to do that. So first off, you're going to get into a lunge position, and then your back foot, you're going to make a little kickstand. So from this direction, it's going to look like this. Lunge position, tall spine, soft knees, kickstand. So that heel popped up off the ground. From there, in that kickstand position, same exact thing. You're going to move up and down, hit the ropes, and that front foot is going to be doing most of the work. So here I am, I still have a nice... Loose arms, kickstand, same thing. Trying to get that wave all the way through the ropes and back. So you can hold that position for the entire interval and then switch stances on round two. One step up from the kickstand, you can add a jump or a hop to make a more of a, a jumping lunge. So you get your rhythm down, a kickstand going. Now, you can do this for part of the interval, and if you get tired, you can switch back to holding the position. So, the next variation uh, is going to be a single leg variation. Just bring your knee right up into your chest, keep this uh, stabilizing leg, or the working leg, down, and then go ahead. And you're going to continue through the interval on one leg. If you get tired, you start to lose your balance, you can either switch, regress it to your staggered stance variation, or bring it back to two feet. All right, that does it for this week's finisher. Just as a reminder, consistency is always going to beat intensity. What we mean by that is although your Forever Strong finishers are supposed to be very intense, by the first 30 seconds, you should be sucking wind at the end of it. This doesn't mean that it should be dangerous or risky. So you should find the progression that is right for you, your balance, your coordination, your joints, and work that progression as hard as you can. But even if for whatever reason you're using a progression that isn't a lot of jumping or isn't, doesn't require a lot of balance, and it maybe isn't getting your heart rate super, super high, that is okay. Um, the consistency, the big picture of getting your workouts in two to three times a week over the long haul, that's what's going to have the, big, the biggest impact. So ask yourself, how many times have you got in a workout this week? Is it two to three times? And did you use the progression that's best for you? If you did, you're going to get the best results. So hang in there, keep a long-term mindset, and make sure you're doing finishers like these at least two to three times a week. And I'll see you next week.